Over the past five decades the name Charles Manson has become synonymous with evil but who exactly was Charles Manson? He was a religious fanatic obsessed with starting a race war, he also had a flair for seducing women, he was also a failed songwriter with an axe to grind against the establishment that rejected him. It's perhaps his elusive persona that makes him so fascinating. Four members of the Manson family Charles Watson, Patricia Krenwinkel, Susan Atkins and Linda Kasabian broke into a affluent L.A. home one hot August night and killed all the occupants including Sharon Tate who at the time was pregnant and the partner of film director Roman Polanski. The crime was so heinous even hardened police officers were shaken by the scene that confronted them when they arrived. The victims had all been tied up before being stabbed and shot multiple times. Sharon had been stabbed 16 times and was discovered with an X etched into her stomach her baby had died in the attack. Everywhere detectives looked there was blood smeared everywhere but the carnage didn't end there. The next night six Manson family members plus Charles broke into the home of a supermarket executive Leno La Bianca and his wife was at home at the time. The couple were tied up then Charles left the home and the attack then occurred. Leno's wife Rosemary was stabbed 41 times while the word war was carved into Leno's stomach. He was later found with a fork in his stomach and a steak knife in his throat. Leno's blood had been used to write on the walls and scrawlings included the words Helter Skelter. Charles was said to be obsessed with the idea of a prophesied race war between white and black people and believed the Beatles' White Album was proof. By December Charles and his Manson family had been arrested the crimes were sloppy and his followers loose-lipped. Charles was never at the Tate's house and had left it before the La Biancas were kiled but at his trial prosecutors asserted that as the leader of the cult it was Charles who ordered and orchestrated the killings even though he didn't kill anyone himself. Charles was charged with first-degree murder and conspiracy to commit murder. Found guilty he was sentenced to death. His sentence was eventually commuted to life in prison when California abolished the death penalty. Charles would die in 2017 aged 83 he would continue to claim his innocence saying he never ordered anyone to do anything other than what they wanted to do. Some believe him and some don't what isn't in doubt is that he had a hold on the members of the family. During his trial people were enthralled and terrified by the wild antics while in court he would arrive to court with an X carved into his forehead and he would represent himself during his trial. Charles who was uneducated but was also highly intelligent and had the ability to gain control over the people he surrounded himself with and get them to do such terrible things. Charles had started as a petty criminal with a dream of being a famous songwriter but ended up being a cult leader and murderer. Charles would target impressionable young women looking for the kind of love and support Charles's community seemed to offer. There was an extensive use of drug and sex within the group. The group would dumpster dive for food and the girls were primed for the sort of brainwashing longtime criminal excelled at. The members of his community were brainwashed and turned into cold bloodied murderers. Charles was denied parole 12 times in total. Charles would die from cardiac arrest resulting from respiratory failure and colon cancer. He was 83 years old. The other members of the group received various prison sentences. Susan Atkins was serving her life sentence central until her death on September 24, 2009 aged 61 years old. Patricia Krenwinkel is serving her life sentence she has been denied parole a total of 14 times. Leslie Van Houten has been denied parole a total of 21 times. Charles Tex Watson is currently serving his life sentence at the Richard J. Donovan Correctional Facility in San Diego, California. Bobby Beausoleil began serving his 30-plus years in prison in 1970. He is currently housed at the California Medical Facility in Vacaville, California. Linda Kasabian was granted immunity for being the key witness for the prosecution and left California after the trial. Steve Grogan was paroled in 1985.